What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll show you how to get the best performance out of Minecraft 1.21.4 The Garden Awakens with a bunch of different Forge mods and configuration. Before we get into this video, if you're going to be playing 1.21.4 and you're looking for a server, check out the sponsor of this video, Apex Hosting. Currently using code Apex25, you can get 25% off your first invoice for a powerful, ultra low latency, DDoS protected, automated backing up Minecraft server for Java, Bedrock, and a bunch of other games. Head over to the link in the description down below, get started, choose your server platform, so Java, Bedrock, or any other game for that matter, select your server size, and just like that, in no time, you'll have a fully customizable Minecraft server going for you and your friends to join. A huge thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. So let's get into it. To get a quick baseline, I'll open up Minecraft, and we'll see what kind of performance we're getting. So 1.21.4 default settings, and currently, in just a basic creative world, I'm getting a solid 97-ish, 95-ish FPS, which is okay, we're playing at 2K. Let's see just how much better we can get this, and of course, we want shaders on top of that, so performance will take a hit, but things should still be better afterwards anyways. Let's do it. So, first of all, we're going to need Fabric installed. If you haven't already got Fabric 1.21.4, head across to the link in the description down below, where you'll find this page. Just choose Download for Windows, save the file, and open it once it's done downloading. When this window pops up, just make sure you have Minecraft 1.21.4 selected, install, and there you go. Then you get prompted about Fabric API. You'll click the next link down below, and you'll be copying this address here. Open up a new file browser, click at the very top, paste in that address, which is essentially the same as percentage app data percentage slash dot Minecraft, and this is your Minecraft folder here. Open the mods folder, and inside of here is where we'll be dropping all of the mods that we're downloading, including what we need, the Fabric API. The next link you'll find down below is Fabric API. Choose a download, followed by selecting 1.21.4 from the game version, and download. Once it's done, drag the file from your downloads into your mods folder over here. Now we've successfully installed Fabric, and opening up our launcher, you should now see a new option here called Fabric Loader. Head across to the Installations tab at the top, followed by Fabric Loader, click the three dots next to it, and choose Edit. Then, expanding more options, looking down here, you'll see XMX 2G. This is the amount of RAM that Minecraft is allowed to use when it's running. Open up your Task Manager with Control shift and Escape, and head across to the Performance tab here, followed by Memory. In here, you'll see how much RAM your system has, as well as how much is currently available. What you want to do is look at what's available, and figure out how much you can give Minecraft, while still leaving yourself some headroom for your browser, YouTube music, etc. Say you have 8 gigs total RAM, and Windows is using just 3 gigs, you have 5 gigs left you could give to Minecraft, but you should always leave 1 gig or so for Windows and background tasks, so you've got about 4 gigs left over. With that number in mind, so however much available RAM you have, minus 1 or 2 gigs, you can punch in the number here in the place of 2. So if I'm going to give Minecraft 4 gigs, I'll make sure it's XMX 4G. I'll save it, and now we can fire it up to see how Minecraft performs under Fabric. Ultimately, Fabric shouldn't be too different from vanilla. It's a very vanilla mod loader on top of Minecraft, so things should seem about the same before we install any extra mods. So firing it up, you can see we're running modded Minecraft, single player, back to the same world. Now we're getting a solid 120 FPS, so we gained about maybe 5 FPS installing Fabric. That's okay, let's get to installing some mods. Now there's quite a few mods I'll be showing you, but we'll start off with the most obvious performance mods, and the most obvious of those are probably going to be Sodium, Lithium, and Iris if you want shaders. Essentially, these three mods are the core for any performance mod pack using Fabric, and they're really good. All of these have been updated to work with 1.21.4, so everything I'm showing you now should work pretty much perfectly out of the box. I'll start by downloading Sodium for Minecraft 1.21.4, Fabric, then Lithium 1.21.4, Fabric, and Iris Shaders, the same options. Essentially, Sodium reworks a lot of the graphics features in Minecraft, how things are rendered, and it can make things work a lot better. Lithium plays around with game ticks, mob AI, and pathfinding, and other things like that, and can result in a lot of FPS slash performance gains under the hood. Iris Shaders works very similar to Optifine, and that you can load and use shaders. Yeah, it even works with Optifine shader packs. If you want some extra mods to make things even better, 
We can download immediately fast, which changes a bunch of different things, how they are rendered, such as entities, block entities, particles, text, HUD, and other things like that. It's a really popular mod, and on top of Sodium, it can result in an even bigger FPS jump. So yeah, it's definitely worthwhile adding. Once again, 1.21.4 Fabric. If you want to add some extra control to Sodium for animations, particles, details, and things like that, you can download Sodium Extra, which adds even more options and control over the game. If you're not too into customizing and fine-tuning things, you don't need to download this one, but it's a good thing to have if you want that possibility of squeezing even more performance out of the game. Then Bad Optimizations, a plugin that does the opposite of its name, helps optimize light map updates, sky color calculations, and a couple of other things, and in the background it can result in a relatively good performance game. Here, they gain about 5-7% to FPS, which is pretty good. Ultimately, it's just a couple of very small tweaks, but it is a seriously popular mod. Then finally, if you don't like how Sodium looks in-game, you can choose to download Reese's Sodium options to reskin things to be a bit more readable. So just for example, this is what the usual Sodium options look like. It's okay, but if you like a more traditional Minecraft style menu, then this mod is going to help you out quite a bit. The tabs are on the left. You can search. I think I'll be downloading this for now. Then Dynamic FPS is a mod that allows you to customize how much FPS your game has when you're tabbed out of it, reading guides, watching YouTube, etc. Having this will save you a ton of battery power if you're on a laptop or mobile device and you tab out of the game, or just in general, it should make things in the background run smoother by limiting Minecraft crafts frames when you're not focusing on it. It's a good idea to add this mod just for improving your general system performance when you're not tabbed into and playing the game. Then the final performance centric mod that I'll be showing you is more culling which changes how objects you can't see are rendered or rather not rendered to give you extra performance on top of everything we have already. I'll download this and add it in. Most of these mods will result in a good FPS boost out of the box without any extra effort configuring things. If you like tweaking your game for better performance slash playability, then you might also be interested in a couple of quality of life mods that I'll be showing you, including client tweaks, which just changes a couple of things about how the game works. You can see most of them in the background here. And if you choose to download this, you'll also need to download Bomb, which is a mod that adds some libraries that that other mod needs to work. Zoomify allows you to zoom in really nicely, and it works pretty well. This is a seriously popular mod, and I did include this in my previous guide, albeit a different version. This seems to be the most popular, up-to-date, and supported mod out there, so I'm throwing it in here as well. Lamb Dynamic Lights as something you may be familiar with if you're an Optifine user, but if you're holding lights, they'll actually cast light into the world around you. It's a super useful QOL mod. Then if you're a windowed player, check out Cubes Without Borders. It adds borderless windowed as an option to the game, so if you're someone who plays windowed, this is going to help you quite a bit. Visuality adds some more particle effects to the game for different mobs and things like that. If you want to add this, you can consider it. It's a, another popular mod. I thought I'd throw it in here for good luck. And finally, Clean F3, which removes a lot of clutter from the F3 menu. And of course, if you wish, you can customize it to enable certain things or hide other things. Now that you've got a bunch of mods installed, how do you know they're all working? Well, you'll not get an error when you start up the game, but also I'd recommend downloading the mod menu. This lists everything in game, a short description of what they are, and it allows you to open your mods folder really easily without having to type anything into Windows Explorer. So now that I've got a ton of mods downloaded, let's get to actually installing them. So again, percentage app data percentage slash dot Minecraft, followed by the mods folder, and inside of here, we'll be moving in everything we just downloaded. This is quite a few mods. Now let's fire up Minecraft once more and configure some things in game. Ah, it seems like we've missed that on some libraries. I'll also have these linked down below. Clean F3 requires Midnight Lib, so we'll grab this. More Culling requires Cloth Config, which isn't linked to here, as I assume it isn't updated for 1.21.4, so I think we'll need to skip out on this for now. Although for you, if you're watching this in the future, it's probably going to work. And finally, Zoomify requires yet another config lib. And finally, Zoomify also wants Fabric Language Kotlin. So adding that, we're now ready to play, hopefully without any errors. Again, if you're watching this in the future, things should hopefully be sorted out. This is quite literally one day after its release, so some of the mods are still updating and catching up. There we go. It's starting, 
And now, checking out the mod screen, you can see everything we currently have loaded. So, Zoomify, Sodium, Mod Menu, Lithium, LAM, Dynamic Lights, Iris, Immediately Fast, Dynamic FPS, Client Tweaks, Clean F3, and Bad Optimizations. With all of these set up, we can head back into our game. And now that we're actually back in-game, hitting F3 was sitting at a solid 150-160 FPS, which isn't too bad. The mods have done something positive for our system, but not all that much just yet. If we pause here, Options, and Video Settings, under General, make sure that VSync is set to Off, and Max Frame Rate right below this is all the way to the right at unlimited. Just by doing these two very simple things, all of our mods kick into overdrive and now we're getting a solid 400, 700, almost 800 FPS, which is massive. This FPS screen here does cause you to lose FPS. So escape options, video settings, advanced extras. Here we can enable the FPS overlay. So show FPS, apply. And now when we close this overlay, you can see an FPS number in the top left and we're at almost 1000 FPS, so that's a 10x boost in performance just by installing these mods with no configuration required. That is absolutely bonkers. Now, if we pause options, video settings, and shader packs at the very top, what I usually play with is complementary reimagined or complementary unbound, but I've got a couple of things installed here. After we apply one of these and waiting for the game to uncrash, I'm now sitting at, with shaders, almost 120 FPS. So yeah, we did lose a ton of performance, but how can you not love how pretty this game looks? Now, obviously, using shaders is going to heavily limit your game FPS-wise, and of course, the further you crank render distance, the worse things are going to get. So from 12 chunks to, I don't know, 24, we'll see more. Things should look a bit better, a bit further away, and performance is going to tank quite a bit, especially if you're running out of RAM, which is why we gave the game quite a bit more. So yeah, that's pretty much that. You now know how to optimize your game for a huge performance boost if you don't use shaders, and if you do use shaders, just installing these mods should help improve performance there as well. Of course, if you use shader packs that aren't so intensive, so for example, the potato shaders leave us at around a solid 200-ish FPS, which is still pretty good, and there's a bunch of post-processing, motion blur, and things like that that do add to the overall game experience. Water looks a bit weird, but yeah, tweaking will fix things like that. But ultimately, just these simple mods are going to make life quite a bit more enjoyable in-game, and there's a couple of QOL improvements that we've made, such as Zoomify so you can zoom in if you want. And other things. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and a special thank you to Apex Hosting once again for sponsoring this guide. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.